I think we are live now and um, welcome to this edition of School of Poetry. Yeah, I can see people are joining already. So you're welcome and uh, I want to say a big thank you for you all for making out time to join us today. So we have an interesting topic to discuss, Chicks Mortality and the Solutions. So I hope that you'll be getting something very tangible from uh, this this edition. Okay, so let me just go straight into what we have. All right, so here is what we are going to discuss today. Uh, this is the fifth edition, the fifth episode. And gradually we are moving on and uh, I believe a lot of us are gaining something already from this uh, school of poetry and I want you all to be, um, I want you all to be supportive with your continuous views and all that and also keep liking the video once you watch every session ensure that you like the video so that you Give me a kind of feedback to know that you guys are enjoying it. Be expecting to get okay. I hope we okay. I hope we can hold here. All right, thank you. So many people will be expecting to to get okay. This happen start whatever treatment that you have. If you think the sound is okay on your hand, please let me know. And then it's not good. Let me know. But so, let me get that feedback before I proceed. Okay, so I'll just do something for it. Let me try to do Hey. 
All right. Uh, okay, let me know if we are back, if you can hear me clearer now. I want to hope that it's clear now. Okay, so let me know if it's clearer now. Sorry. Oh, that's important. Okay, is it clearer now, please? Let me know, let me know. Okay, okay, so thank you, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so we have a couple of things to talk about. I'm going to be starting from the start, from the get-go. What the first thing you should even consider before you have anything like chicks mortality and all that. And that's the issue of archery, the archery and the parent stock. You see, a lot of things that happen in the life of the chicks, especially in the first one week, depends largely on what had happened in the life of the parent stock as well as in the hatchery the hatching post process and all that uh let's not let's even leave aside this fact that some arteries will tell you that they have given so so and so vaccine whereas the whether the process of giving it is not efficient enough or they even lie to you okay that aside but then the entire process of uh hatching chicks and the uh, getting the eggs from the parent stock and all that, the management of the parent stock, all those things have a role to play in the life of your chicks. So it's just like you're getting the end result of what had happened in the hatchery and even in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the life of the parent stock. Okay, so you need to be careful of how you choose your archery, how you choose the source of your cheese. You don't just go with the cheapest on the market. You have to ensure that this particular archery has a good history. And that's one of the reasons why it's good to work with vendors that are um, aware of what is going on in the industry. So they, they are able to guide you based on the current history of the archeries and all that. So in case you are interested in booking, if you are in Nigeria and you are interested in booking Dale Chicks from DIY Agri, okay, I'll be putting the number on the screen, but just uh, quickly, I'll be putting that number on the screen before we go on to the next point. So ensure that you choose a very good archery so that you don't have a lot of problems to deal with in during your brooding and even uh after the first few weeks all right so and the second point i'll be addressing is transportation as little or as um minute as you may see this issue of transportation it also plays a huge role in the survival and the performance of your cheeks yeah it, it plays a huge role in the survival and performance of your cheeks you see sometimes people people that transport the birds for you, they might have done so much harm to the bird that things do just go fine in the rearing period. So it's important that you try as much as possible to get people who transport the birds who have care and concern for the birds, not just those who are after their money, the money they want to get from you and just do whatever they will Whatever, they ple whatever pleases them to your birds. So that also is very important. So we are going somewhere. Uh, before we end, I'm going to be giving you what I call the organic first aid, actually. The first aid that you can, you can give to your birds. Even if you don't know what is happening, you are confused. You don't know what to do. You don't even know the signs that you're seeing. The first aid that you can give to them that will increase the chance of their survival by at least 80%. I'm going to give you that as a freebie before the end of the session. All right, so you want to stick around. You want to make sure that you see this to the very end and also try to like the video. All right, so many people are saying the sound is clear, but somebody is saying it's still wobbling. So you might want to check your network as well. That's one thing with streaming. If, you, if the network is poor on your end, 
you may not enjoy some part of it. All right, so then arrival of your cheeks. At arrival, how prepared are you? You see, I have been to some farms. <laughs> I've been to some farms and you see, the farmer is not even one percent ready for the birds and the birds are here already they are on the farm you see one of the things that you need to do before your birds arrive is to ensure that you provide the environmental or room temperature that would be good for them birds depending on the kind of birds you have and the prevailing weather but most often you need about 34 degrees uh, c then four degrees Celsius for your birds when they arrive on your farm. Between 34 to 35, it's okay to, to make them settle in well, especially in the evening. They, if they arrive at your farm in the evening, you need that heat. If they arrive in the afternoon, yeah, everywhere is still warm, so it may be good. But if they arrive early in the morning or in the evening, you definitely need to provide them with some form of heat. Yeah um except maybe you are doing you are following the kind of uh, method that i did in that uh video on youtube where i talked about using the brooder box that would uh, help you to brood without the need of uh, supplementary it but if you are not doing that you definitely need a kind of eat eat device or eating device on your farm and you want to put those ones on ground before the birds arrive. Another thing that you need to do is to provide them with water so that as they are settling in, in fact, as you are bringing them out of the cartons, you are putting their beak inside the water that has been, of course, you have to put anti-stress. Uh, commonly people use, um, they use glucose and you can also put your uh, commercially sold anti-stress, whatever you want to use. I also use coconut water and all those things work. So you want to dip their beak inside it. You see, as little as these steps are, the role that they play <laughs> are very significant. Some of the birds that you put their beak inside the water and they immediately know, okay, this is water and they take more of it. If they don't take water at all for the next maybe two hours, they may not perform well throughout their entire life. So it's important that you try as much as possible to settle your birds in as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible. You see, uh, some, some people, when, the, when they get their cheeks, maybe they have five pieces shorted and all those things. You see, they spend time arguing with the driver, dragging and complaining and doing all manner of things while the birds are still there suffering. They are not even concerned about, oh, let me quickly go and settle these birds in. And most of, this, most of the time, these are people who have waited two days. The birds were ashed, and before they, uh, from moving them from the hatchery to their own farm, it has taken two days already. And the driver is with you, you are still complaining, you are still wasting time with the birds. No, that's not so good. So as quickly as possible, try to take your birds to the farm, give them water, and let them have um, the environment that is suitable for them. Okay, so I have quickly briefed on the eating devices, and I want to say a big congratulations to those who have uh, bought the Damley gas product that uh, we sold, the first batch, those who got them, and the second batch is even uh, in Nigeria already, and we'll be clearing them uh, very soon. I think in the coming week, they should call me for pickup. So those who will be, all, who will be able to get that as well, that brooder is going for 118,000, and you can brood, brood um, 2,500 chicks to 3,000 chicks. That's the capacity, so it's quite huge. So you need to choose well the eating device that you are using. I don't like charcoal. Yeah, you may be able to you may be able to manage it. It may work for you, but in all, it's not so good for your own health, even for the cheeks. If you are not able to manage it well, it is bad. Let me give you an example. There was somebody I supplied with four hundred birds. I don't know if the person is watching. The person is on my group, on my cheeks booking group. I supplied the person with I think four hundred or two hundred. I can't remember 
correctly, but I think it's 400. 400 beds. And I guess the person got it on Tuesday. And the person called me back on Thursday saying he wants to book, book for another 400 beds. Why? All the 400 beds died because the worker was negligent or I don't know what the worker did. The whole place got burnt. The charcoal, fire, uh, the sawdust or the wood shavings caught fire from the charcoal that splashed on the floor. And the old chicken, all the chickens, all the chicks just died. 400 died, like just like barbecue. Everything just died. We're even thanking God that the old building did not come down. So, you know, prevention is always better than uh, control. So if you can afford gas, please use gas. If electricity is good at your hand, please use it. Try as much as possible to avoid the use of charcoal. Okay, so that's that about the eating devices. And we're getting to the uh, more interesting part of it, which are very key. However, I want you all to note the first three or four that I've listed, the archery, uh, the archery, uh, archery and the parent stock, the transportation, the arrival of your birds and how prepared are you, and then the eating devices. So now we'll talk about nutrition. You see, once your birds arrive on your farm, antibiotics is not the next most important thing to do. Yeah, you have been able to conquer all the battles of getting the birds from a good archery, uh, getting a good driver to transport them to your farm, um, giving them water, water once they arrive on your farm and everywhere is heated up to the right temperature. You have been able to win all those battles and you got yourself good eating device. Okay, so after all this, the next most important is not antibiotics. The next most important is good feed for your chicks good feed for your chicks you see you need to get the best feed that you can get yeah and the best feed does not necessarily mean the most expensive it just means a feed that will deliver the right amount of nutrients to your birds you see even when uh thank god i have a newborn who is already three months you want to give your child the best food that you can give so that the child will grow the all the developmental stages or processes going on in the, in the child's body will be fed with the right nutrients. You don't want to starve the bed of any nutrient at all. Maybe it's vitamin D, vitamin that. You don't want to starve the bed of anything. So you want to make sure that you patronize a good company that sells good commercial feed or you formulate your own chicken feed by yourself and you ensure that it is rich in protein. It is having the right amount of energy and all the micronutrients are also in place. Okay, so for that, uh, some of us just completed the poultry feed formulation masterclass. I even promised them that this weekend we'll be rounding up. I'll be sharing the freebies that I promised the feed formulas and um, we'll also be doing a question and answer um, session. So if you're interested in that too, a feed formulation masterclass that addresses everything that you need uh, to know about poultry feed, I tell you, everyone who attended were blown away. Trust me. So it's, it entails a lot of videos, so you may have to use a lot of data to watch it, but that's just to make sure that you get all that we are trying to pass across. So nutrition is the next most important. Try as much as possible to feed your birds and feed them well. Feed them at the right time. Don't forget to feed them. Don't say, ah, I forgot. I slept up and all those things. Don't forget to turn up, uh, to turn on the light in the chicken brooding house. Don't forget. Don't leave them for long hours without eating. It's just like leaving a newborn baby for long hours without e eating. You will start, the baby may might start having a uh, running temperature, having headache and all that. Your chickens may not be able to tell you or inform you that you don't owe them close to your body. So you may not know what is going on in their body. So you want to ensure that you give them all that is necessary. 
Okay. Uh, all right, we are moving on. I decided to check the charts to see what some people are saying. Okay, so nutrition is super important. It's super important. Please, let's not joke with nutrition. Get the right uh, feed that you need. For example, for broilers, you know that you need your broiler starter. As a matter of fact, because of the level of protein that people now include in their broiler starter, <laughs> some of us even believe that broiler starter is not good enough to start your broilers. So we tend to go with uh, super starter, you know, all manner of names. The companies are just bringing up all these names just to get more money for us, uh, from us. Whereas their broiler starter ordinarily should have enough protein that we need. We see most of them put like 20%, 20 percent, 20 point something percent protein in their broiler starter. I need to get their super starter before you can get up to 22 percent protein, and that's not so good. So you want to ensure that you give your birds the best that they can get, and especially layers. Don't I don't start layers with chick smash because chick smash is usually very poor in Nigeria. I can say. Chick smash is usually very poor. So you want to start them with something like Rella starter or even the super starter, at least for the first two weeks. You can then go to chick smash after that two weeks, then to six weeks, the seventh week, then you can move to grower. But very important that you give them um, a very rich food or feed when they are starting. And here is why. Here is why. You see, most of the diseases or the disease challenges that may come up in the first few days when you are raising your birds will be handled by the birds themselves if they are healthy, if they, 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 they are fed with the right diets that they need. Yeah, if they are not lacking in any essential nutrients, most of the diseases can actually be combated by the birds. Yeah, when you now give them antibiotics or you are doing organic poultry and you give them the right apps that you should give them in the right quantity. You see, those things will just help to support the birds. But originally, if you give them quality feed, they will be healthy enough. Come on, I need to show you guys my cockerels. I have always hated cockerels. Maybe not when I was young, but since I graduated as an animal scientist, I've always hated cockerels. I don't like the fact that they are not so big. I love big birds. But I haven't given these guys that I have, I give, I've been giving them the new uh, professional, the extra starter. Yeah, that's what they call it. I've been giving them and they are just looking so good. So <laughs> they say there's nobody that is not beautiful. Once they see money, they will be beautiful. It's the same thing with chicks. Once they see good feed, you will see them perform excellently well. So I want us to take the issue of nutrition very seriously. All right. So, and the first three days, the first three days, very key in brooding of chicks to prevent chicks mortality. You don't want to joke with their feed. You don't want to joke with their water. Don't make the water dirty. A lot of us will leave our chicken drinkers or chicks drinkers dirty. The second day you get there, you just pour the water away and just put it, uh, replace the water with fresh one without cleaning the drinker. <laughs> chicks are very sensitive to their, their immune system have not yet fully developed to be able to uh, combat the bacteria that is in uh surplus amount around us so you want to ensure that you give them clean water you protect their feet from rodents you ensure that you are not introducing any bacteria by yourself because if you don't clean your drinkers you have just said hey chicks take this bacteria take this disease into your system and let's see what it's going to do for you so you want to prevent that. The first three days, very critical. So you ensure that you clean their drinkers once you get there the next day, you clean it before you fill the water, uh, fill the drinker with fresh water. You clean it, and you give them the feed at the right time and give them supplemental lighting. 
no program on heart should make you not give them uh, supplemental lighting in the night, in the first week, even in the first two weeks. No program on heart should make you not give them supplemental lighting in the first few weeks of their life. So the first three days, very critical. You need to give them all the attention they can get. It's not a time for you to collect your birds and travel. Yeah, if you invest your time in these birds, they will give you what you need in return. All right, so, and also, you know, you want that's when you want to start your antibiotics if you are doing it the conventional way. You want to start your antibiotics. One of the reasons why we do this is actually to clear their gut of any bacterial buildup that is coming up uh, in their gut. So whatever they are taking from the environment that is not good for them, the antibiotics will take care of it. And a lot of times they also come from the actual with some infection. Yeah, a lot of times they come with some infection. It is when the infection is not serious that we don't feel it. But when it is critical, you feel it during your brooding. <clears throat> Excuse me. You feel it during your brooding, and you need to address it critically too. Okay, so you give them your antibiotics for the first three to five days, usually three to five days. May you try as much as possible to se to select an antibiotic that will also go with multivitamins so that they can eat. Because you will see some of them that will be weak from the transport stress, the arching process and all that. So they may need multivitamins to come up and perform well. If you, if you have noticed, there are some birds that will come to your farm very weak. If you mark them, in the end, they still come up to be one of the biggest. So it doesn't mean that because they come weak, they will be weak forever. No. So you need to give them that chance of survival and that chance to perform excellently so the first three days don't forget is very critical the eating has to be done i mean the provision of eat and then the feed the water has to be clean then you give them attention and then you give them the multi multivitamins and the antibiotics all right so general well-being of your chicks you need to just be there for them you need to be able to observe them and see when they are good and when they are not good. And because they are chicks, they are fragile. So you don't want to see a disease symptom or sign in the morning and say, oh, maybe tomorrow. No, you don't do that with chicks. You, you may still do that with mature birds and you scale through without any serious issue. But if you do that with chicks, before you come, they may be weak to the point that they don't even respond to your treatment. Yeah. So if they are weak to the point that they don't respond to your treatment, you may lose a lot of chicks in the end. So try as much as possible to address their disease situation quickly. Try to provide them with the care that they need. Don't waste time on getting their drugs. That's why you should also get, you should have a drug store a drug shelf in your farm because sometimes they may come down with disease on weekends that you're not able to get drugs on Sundays. So let's let me create let me paint a picture right now. Let's say your birds are sick on Friday evening or on Saturday evening, you notice it and veg veg shops are closed, you can't get drugs. And just like this week that we are entering now, uh on Monday is a public holiday, Tuesday is a public holiday, they are dead already, you see? So there are some key medications that we should have on our shelves. Once you are planning to brood, you should try as much as possible to get some antibiotics ready, multivitamins ready, anticoxy ready, and anti-CRD ready. Those are very common diseases that, um, I mean, the coxie and CRD are common diseases that farmers uh, encounter from time to time. So nobody should come and tell you or advertise the drug to you before you buy. All right. Okay, so we are at the point where I'm going to give you something now. 
for those of us who have gone through the organic poultry class, there is a lot already that you are, <clears throat> excuse me, that you are benefiting from. And I'm just going to give you guys a freebie now so that you can enjoy it and start to use it for your, uh, for your cheeks. So let's say you you are even confused. You don't you are not, you are not seeing any sign. You just notice that your birds are dying. Okay, before I say this, I just remember something now that I jotted down. You see, we have talked about providing your birds with the right amount of heat, and that's the temperature. The room temperature has, has to be okay. In cases of excessive heat, when you eat up the house, that like, the heat becomes too much is also detrimental to the birds. One of the things that can come up in that case is that they will dehydrate and they will just be falling down and die. They will just be falling and dying. You won't see any sign other than dehydration, which you may not even notice because they are covered up with feathers. So try as much as possible to maintain the right amount of heat that they need. Don't give them excess heat. Don't just light up the whole place and everywhere is heated up and you are sweating and you are saying, yes, it's okay. Yeah, you should sweat inside the brooding house if any eating device is on. But if it is too much, the birds will die. And so as a farmer, forget the fact that you are a professional, you need a thermometer. Yeah, you can do it without a thermometer, but it's best you have a thermometer. So you are close to exact. Without a thermometer, you may not be close to exact. Maybe the, the chicks have, they will have to tolerate to a point before they will go to one side and run from the heat. They have already tolerated to a point. They may be stretched to a level and it's still okay for them. They can still manage. But for you to eliminate that stress at all, you don't want the stress to be there at all. You need a thermometer so that you'll be able to tell, okay, the temperature is this and you just say they are okay. If it's not okay, then you go and correct it. And um, I'm even almost out of the smart thermometer that I have, so I'm not trying to advertise a smart thermometer. I think I just have one left, so I'm going to bring in another another batch of that. So the smart thermometer is actually good, so you don't have to enter inside your chicken house all the time and go and look at the screen of that small thermometer. The smart one, you just check from your phone, just say, okay, was it reading and that thermometer also gives you the opportunity to check a, the whole chart maybe from day one to day 20 you know exactly what the temperature is at every hour it has a graph it gives you all those readings it's it's so good so let's try to minimize or make the heat perfect not too much not too little okay so back to the organic first aid I was talking about. So let's say you are confused. You don't know what to do. The breasts are just dying and you just want to remedy the situation. Or maybe you have even called DIY Greek and it's not picking your call. Maybe it's chick supply day is so busy or you got busy with family and you're just calling, the guy is not picking. Or the guy says, send text. You send text, he has not read your text. Just forgive him, forgive him. But then, in the midst of it, of this, of this confusion, of this uncertainty, you don't even have a particular poop color that you can go online and say, okay, I've seen uh, brownish poop, I've seen this. Nothing, everything looks okay, but the best are just dying. Yes, there's something you can use, and it's just going to work for you. Okay, so where is it, where is it, where is it? Um... Okay, so you see, this is the recipe for what I call organic first aid. This is the recipe and I want you all to just take a screenshot or you want to write it down, whatever or however you want to do it. Take a screenshot, write it down. So this is the recipe. And for this, you don't need to ask for dosage. You just give it as prepared. So you try to use warm water, three liter warm water, 100 mil. This three liter warm water now, you should know that 
this one would in the first week, in the first few days, this three liter warm water would be okay for even up to in the first few days, let's say the first day one, day two, day three, it should be okay for a hundred beds. Yeah, they will not even finish it in the first few hours. So, and as the age goes up and the quantity of birds that you are having over there goes up, you then multiply the ingredient. But this is the base recipe. Three, three liter of warm water, 100 ml of honey, 100 ml of honey, two tablespoon of apple cedar vinegar. Yeah, apple cedar vinegar is easy to produce by yourself. But you can also get the Bragg's ACV at any supermarket. It's usually more expensive though. You may be buying it for up to 4,005 or so for one liter. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you can make that one liter by yourself with, uh, I think, six, six apples, six red apples. That's all you need, just the apples. And just get a container and slice the apple inside and allow it to ferment for several days. When the apple sinks down, then you can start to use. But then it's not even ready. It's not fully ready, but you can start to use. So the longer it stays, the better it is. And don't ever remove the apples. Let it just remain down there as the mother. So that's basically how to make that ACV. I think I have a write-up on my blog on making ACV or so. I can't remember. So then 10 or 100 grams of garlic. Yeah, garlic, garlic, garlic. That wonder uh, ingredient, OK? And then 20 ml of liquid smoke. 20 ml of liquid smoke, if you have it, fine. If you don't have it, fine. But try to have it. I am sorry for those that I promise that I'm going to put up the video of how to make the liquid smoke. Sorry, I've not done it. Even though I've got, I think I've got all the things that I needed. I should be making it after this feed fermentation uh, video. I'm currently making the feed fermentation, so I'll publish that hopefully in the next two days or so. All right, so that's the ingredient. I'm going to be taking it off now. So let's try as much as possible to have that somewhere. Right, so you're confused. You don't know what is going on. Your birds are just dying. Just go there first. Make those things, put those things together and just serve it at, as is. You don't need to dilute it. There's no ratio here. Just give it to them as you have prepared it. And I tell you, that may be the only magic that they need. We call it magic water, we call it wonder water, we call it all the names that you can get. I've actually recommended it for somebody, for the man is in Abuja, engineer Dominic. I don't know if he's watching now. And after I gave him, he had tried some things, he had tried some drugs, the chicks were just dying and they were Brahmas. So they were so precious to him. And after I gave him, that was when I just concluded the research. I just tested it too and it worked for me. So he called me and I just said, okay, do this, give this and that and that. And he combined it and gave it to the birds. And after two days, or on the second day, yeah, he called me, he was like, wow, Ogami. That's why he calls me. Ogami he said, this thing worked like crazy, like magic. So he even went to my group and started saying, oh, DIY has something new that he has not told us, blah, 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 blah. So that's how good the, um, first aid is so don't forget it is something that will help you as you go on in this poultry and especially those of us who want to stick with organic poultry all right so it's time to be taking questions now we are we have concluded oh sorry mr Said is saying network is not doing him well. It is well. <laughs> okay, it's time to send in your questions. If you have questions, it's time to take in take your questions now. Questions, please. Questions. Uh, 
And if there are no questions, I might just go to bed. <laughs> okay. I know you guys must be typing now. Okay. So for, again, for those who will be interested in the poultry feed formulation masterclass, the, the next, the next batch, we'll be scheduling it soon. I've not really stated the exact date, but we'll be making the dates known very soon. And um, if you want to join, if you want to join, people have already started paying for the class. The fee is just 12,500 Naira, or what's the equivalent in dollars? Equivalent in dollars, I think $25 was what we had on it. Okay. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sunday Lendu. Okay, we'll ask this. This is actually, it, it depends on the, on the class of chicken you are getting. But basically, if you have around 60 down to 50 humidity, you'll be fine. 60 down to 50 humidity. And this thermometer that I was talking about, it gives you both temperature and humidity. So it's usually called thermo hygrometer. Okay. And the temperature should be dropping from 35.5. Yeah. But because our weather is usually hot, you find out that even 34, when you, when you have 34, it's, it's okay within the house. But most times where there are flashes, hot flashes that just make the temperature go up. So if you have 20, 34, you are good. <clears throat> In the first day and maybe the second day, but you need to be dropping it from third day, it has to go down maybe All right, sorry for that um, break. I guess we need to take a report to our telecom provider. All right, I believe we can we can hear again. Let's see if we can get uh, more questions. <clears throat> All right, so from 34, you can be dropping it. I thought they should be around 30. 31 and um, 29, then to, to room temperature. There are times I just brew for four days and the birds are fine. So it depends on the weather around you. But then 34 to 35.5 marks. That 35.5 should be just, just for one day if you are using that at all. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you too. Okay, here's another question. All right, Mr. Oli, Mr. Oli, Mr. Oli and I were just talking some minutes ago before the class. Okay, so the magic water, when is the best age of birth to use it for prevention or must it be used when you have issues? Yeah, you can just use it even when you don't have any challenge on the farm. All you need to do, I can I can recommend that you give them maybe just once a week. There are people that give them every day. There are people that just raise birds in their backyard, of course, and this is all that they use. This is all that they use. So you can just decide to be giving them once a week. Only what is there that is not good for your birds? Is it garlic? Is it honey? Is it uh, the ACV? The ACV will keep their guts LD to clear um it makes it uncomfortable for some microbes that may be settling there so it's just so good everything in that mix is good so you can decide to give it every day but then you know you have to weigh the economics of the whole thing only is expensive garlic is not so free in the market so you need to also check the economics part of it so once a week will do to just serve as a boost for them or their immunity so it's a, it's actually an immune booster so it works it works well all right so i read that lighthouse should be gradually reduced after a few after about a few days from the old what do you think boss mm. uh, i like that but you see, it depends on what you want to get. In the first few days, I don't encourage that you reduce light hours at all. One reason why I may even want to introduce one hour of darkness is so that <laughs> we are still in Nigeria. In case light goes out just suddenly, so that your birds will not just uh, die as a result of shock. So if you want to acclimatize them to that darkness, that uh, occasional darkness. But in the first few days, actually, just give them all the lights that they can get. They, they, they are still good with eating all the feed that they can eat. Even neonates, I mean babies now, they eat often, more often than, than adults will eat. So it is when they, when they are able to hold up reasonable amount of feed in their uh, digestive system for a reasonable amount of time that you can start to say, okay, let me let me slow down on their feeding. And that doesn't happen in the first week at all. So let them have all the feed they can get, especially broilers. I'm actually emphasizing on this for the sake of broilers now because there's a weight target that you have. You want to sell them at five weeks. Some of us sell them at even four weeks and few days. There are those that sell, you know, there are eateries that buy crazy size of chickens so that you can even sell to them at four weeks, three weeks plus. So let's even put that aside. But then the regular one, the 2 kg to 2.2, 2.5 kg max, that's just five weeks. So there's a target you have to meet. You don't want to say because of one uh lights lighting program you want to miss your target so when, once they get to two weeks plus yes you can start to introduce all those things to them and at three weeks plus in this nigeria that we have you notice that you can't even really feed them much so you want to gather all those weights in the first two three weeks of their life the best that when, once they get to three weeks you will, not, you will not be able to feed them in the afternoon for up to like five hours, sometimes six hours, because eating in some places can be crazy. Once you once your birds eat in the afternoon, in the hot afternoon, you just see them dying. So those are the things you will want to cover up in the early period of raising the chicks. So in the first few days, no lights out as much as you can. If light is going to go out, maybe just for few minutes you run to your generator and put it back on let them continue eating they don't need that stress of oh god 
what's this darkness? They don't need it in the first few days. Maybe if you want to start doing the one hour light of let them enjoy light for the first uh, 10 days or so, then you may give them one hour light of then, you know, they already holding reasonable amount of feet inside their crop and all that. So that's it. I don't do that light out, at least intentionally. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Training on layers and knowing layers. I'm actually planning that already. After I put in some um, materials together, there's a lot to do. So DIY is kind of busy, but I have that in the pipeline. So training on layers will be coming soon. We might be doing it. We might be able to do it in June, or maybe we'll use it to, yeah, we might be able to do it in June. June, yeah. Early June, I believe. Okay. How many days should eat of the brooding house? Yeah, it, de it, de it depends. It varies. It can be, like I said, I've done it for four days, just four days before. I think those bears I used, I used them for training hats there. And I mentioned it in my videos. So just four days and, if I, in fact, three days. Yeah, that was when I was supposed to test the Damley gas brooder. I was supposed to test it and tell you guys how well it manages gas. But after three days, everywhere was hot. Even in the night, I was not able to use gas again, so I had to stop. So it depends on your weather, the prevailing weather in your area. So, But typically, it should get to like seven to ten days. Yes, typically it should be seven to ten days. But in extreme cases... Ah, you can't even go beyond three, four days. All right. So if your farm is in the bush where it's cold, it's usually cold in the night, you may have to go for up to uh, seven, ten days. Some even go to up to two weeks, but that's, that's crazy. I don't think I can do that. I'd rather find a way of managing the situation. I wouldn't want to burn gas for two weeks. That's a lot. All right, so what else? Okay, somebody is asking for the right time to give them egg emotion to chicks. I would say anytime from the first week after seven days, you can decide to introduce it. Most of the time, I don't, I don't, I don't even use it for them until they are two weeks or more. So most of the time, I try to leverage on other things instead of the egg emotion. Okay, um, yeah, thank you too for watching. Thank you for joining us and God bless you too. All right. Okay, yeah, the same response. Actually, the black pepper, there's nothing wrong in giving the black pepper and the rest in the first few days. There's nothing wrong. But I, for one, I, in my opinion, I like to I like to allow the birds show me what they are made of before I even uh, try to push them further. So let me see if the birds are even good. Let me see if they are doing well to see if I'm actually boosting their weight. Some some birds will come and in seven days they are already looking amazing. So you know already that they are going to perform well. So whatever boost you are giving them is just to push them. I have got some, you're like, wow, wow, I really need to start to boost their weight, you see? So I want to be able to tell what I'm doing. So I don't want to start at day one. I, I've never done that. But there's nothing wrong in you doing that. You just add it to their feet. So it's, it's just fine. It's fine for them. It's fine. But if you start at two weeks, you still get amazing results that you need. At least most of the results that I publish, there are not many farmers that get them. So if you are still able to get what DIY gets, that's fine. And I don't start too early with all those growth promoters. Excuse me. Okay. Mm, I think most of these questions are similar, but about tonic, about tonic should be coming in anytime from the 
third, fourth week. Yeah, because then you are sure that you have you have actually put their liver to work. They have worked and worked, and you need to you need to help the liver. So about tonic should come in later, but you can give your immune booster earlier, earlier. Okay, let me quickly talk about the brooding box. Okay, you're asking if you can use it for older bags. Actually, if I have if I have just five layers that the family is just using, maybe we are, we are, we are using it as our source of eggs, I can use that box for them. I'll just improvise, arrange a, uh, a better kind of um, feeder or a suitable feeder for them. And I would also make a drinker for them. I will try to automate the drinker as much as I can so that I don't have to go there all the time to change their water. Maybe I'll just put a water container that they can take for like two days on top of it and run a pipe. Maybe I'll use nipple and just run a pipe. So I like to automate processes because there are times you might be away for several hours and you're Chickens must not suffer. Okay, so you can actually use it for any age, but the purpose for that one was for brooding. That's why we had to cover it with sacks. If you're using it for holder bears, there's no need of covering it with sacks. The nets can be open because they don't need any form of heat at that point. Okay, so it can carry them. We are, that's another reason why I had two... My capital was advising that I should use ju just the chicken net, the chicken wire mesh for the base. So I told him I wanted to use the stronger one so that it can act, act as um, extra support if I'm using the box for a bigger bird, okay? So you can actually use it for bigger birds. All right. Sure, sure. You can give it to cockerels. You can give the growth promoters to cockerels. It's fine. You can only replace glucose on the first day. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you can use this uh, first aid or wonder drink, whatever name you want to give it. You can use it on the first day. Yeah, this. Yeah, you can use it on the first day. It works. It works well. So only two can work on the first day. Just make sure it's not too much because only is so loaded and it's dense. Make sure it's not too much. As a matter of fact, 10 mil, 10 mil of only would do for four liters of water. 10 mils of honey is enough for four liters of water. All right. That's if you're using just honey. Just honey. Okay. Let's see if we have another question to answer. I don't quite understand the community. I don't know what you mean by the community. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing that this person is um, is a member on the on the channel. So I don't know the community you're talking about. Maybe the training. Please, can you elaborate on that? Okay. A lot of us are asking questions about the growth promoters. That's cool. All right, please write in the comment section because there are, I, have, I, have some, I have some things in the archive. If you think that you still want me to make more videos on group promoters, let me know in the comment section right away. Amen, amen. Thank you, sir. So if you think you still want me to do more videos on growth promoters, 
excuse me so if you want me to do more videos on group promoters please write in the comment section let me see let me see if you guys want your bears to grow big 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 <laughs> more videos like okay more video likes yeah 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 please if you have not liked this video if you have not liked this live stream please go ahead and do that <clears throat> that's one way to help you see i've i've decided to put a lot of things to make this happen i'm going to be showing you something see see my lights see my ring lights see another light here there are two two lights here. See my camera, see my setup, see everything, and there's still more to come. And that's just me putting out all that I can put out so that you guys will enjoy quality content. And I'll be able to help you. Like I say, I'm your poetry success partner. Then I should be able to provide all the help I can give. So one way that you can give give back to DIY is by liking these videos, watching these videos, sharing it with your friends. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know other farmers, maybe your family member is a farmer also, share the videos, subscribe, click on the bell button. All those things are the ways you can give back to DIY. So please and please, if you, <laughs> if you don't, if you haven't liked the video, you are not doing well you are not doing well all right so make sure that you always like my videos and share them all right somebody is laughing at me <laughs> okay okay so is that all is that all okay okay the organic class all right so just send me a message on whatsapp please send me a message on whatsapp you'll be added i will send you the details and you'll be added okay so that's the number on the screen that's the number to send a message to just let me know you are the one and you want to join the organic poetry class okay so let me just um say that again i have the organic poetry class as the organic poetry course we used to be a 10 days training so i decided to because of time challenge i decided to crash it into a course so once you join that course you have access to all the things that we discussed we it's now in module one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so those 10 modules were to get you on things to do organically you can raise your birds from day old to maturity if you have been a follower of this channel for a while you know that there was a time that i raised birds from day old to maturity with just herbs and spices and i did it in front of everyone so it's not one abracadabra what i did then was i first did a batch i did them conventionally so i raised them with um antibiotics and all drugs that I could get, I showed everyone. So after that, I now did another batch that, that was organic from start to finish. And I also showed it all. It's all there on my um, YouTube channel. I think I even have it on a playlist. Yeah. So I have that class. You can join it if you want to get a kind of holistic knowledge about organic poultry. You don't want to just pick from here that, yeah, it's good to use garlic. You pick from another person, ah, it's just, it's good to use uh, purple seeds, purple, um, whatever, neem. It's good to use neem. It's, just, it's good to use mango bark. It's, <laughs> some of these things, once you use them the wrong way, they give you a negative result. And you say, ah, it's a lie. DIY is lying. This thing does not work. So it's good that you know the right amount and when to use. There are some of them, for example, you don't use Christmas melon tagiri for ends, that's female uh, chicken, ends that are up to 14 weeks of age. So you may not hear that when you see, when you hear that Christmas melon is good and you just start to give it to your birds. I've seen a farmer that did that and it's 
production that was supposed to be increasing just crashed. All right. So you want to make sure that you know what you are doing and taking that course is one of the ways to know what you are doing. Okay. Once you do that, a lot of things will be clearer to you. I also have somebody, I think she, she was with us. I don't know if, she, if she's still with us who started the poultry and she has been doing organic since day one. I've been to her place for a couple, a couple of times just to put her through and she's really doing well. Okay, so it's possible. It's not only the hour that is able to get the results. Anyone can. So that's for the organic poultry and there is this poultry feed formulation masterclass. A lot of people talk about feed formulation, but all they will give you is just feed formula. They don't teach you enough to be able to formulate by yourself. And in this training, I also give you a software that will help you to formulate. If you get a formula from anywhere, you can just plug it in and the software tells you, yeah, it's good. Hmm, it's not good. It's deficient in this. It's deficient in that. And add this, add that. It's just so simple. So if you're interested in that as well, just send a message on WhatsApp to the number on the screen and I'll be able to put you in the class. Okay, and I have, if you do the, if you join the organic poultry uh, course, you have this book, but the e-copy, I am the only one that have the ad copy here. Yeah, except you ordered it from Amazon yourself. Amazon is the publishing company that I use. So I decided to get this as the author's copy to send to me. So, but for, for you here in Nigeria, you can get the soft copy. If you join the course, it's coming to you for free. And another 205 page ebook is coming to you for free. So all those things are the are some of the things you enjoy. And there's more. Okay, so how do you get gel out of aloe vera? And you just cut it, you just slice it from that thin edge. You know, aloe vera, there's different species of aloe vera, and depending on how you grow it to, it may grow to have lots of gel, and it may grow to be very thin, having just some gel. But what's important is that you cut from the edge. Let's say this is aloe vera, they cut from the edge, then you open, or you slice into small bits and it's now easy to assess the gel. You slice, let's say it's long, you slice, you slice, but it's, it's easy. You can even check on YouTube and just check how to extract the gel from aloe vera. Everything nowadays is on YouTube, yeah. Okay, so somebody's asking organic or synthetic, which is best from what angle from what perspective because for your health and wellness organic is excellent uh synthetic is no good it's no good and let me paint a picture for you you have birds on your farm have you noticed that brothers especially those that we raise for five six weeks have you noticed that people encounter more challenges when the birds are close to sale, when you want to sell them? That's where you see most of the challenges, when they are about four weeks plus and all that. So you have the birds, they are dying. You have 5,000 birds and they are dying five, a day, nine, five, 15, four, seven. And you start to treat maybe chronic respiratory disease and they are already 2.1 kg, but they are coughing like they will die the next minute. And you are treating. At the same time, you are also marketing. And maybe a customer comes and you sell off. Whereas on the label of the drugs you are using, they will write there your withdrawal times. I mean, your withdrawal period. Some will say seven days, some will say nine days, some will even say 15 days. How many farmers do observe the withdrawal periods? <laughs> Some people will tell you that they don't know that any drug like that has withdrawal periods. So it is not good that human beings are having these antibiotics into their system because when you're eating the birds without 
the farmer was having the withdrawal period, you're having loads of that antibiotic inside humans. And some of them are related to the antibiotics that we use to as humans. And when you now have that challenge, maybe you have a bacterial disease as a human and you want to use antibiotics to combat it, your uh, your the microflora, or what will I call it now, they are already familiar with the antibiotics in your system. So once you use it for treatment, it's not even doing anything. They have built resistance to it. So it's not good for humans. That residue that is left in the birds is no good for humans. And on the growth aspect, I've not seen anywhere that they will say, yeah, your birds will be bigger because it's, it's not organic. As a matter of fact, organic can be bigger than the synthetic once you know what you're doing. So organic is the best. Health is the first. So organic is the best that you can get. But for anyone doing it the conventional way, the synthetic way, <clears throat> just try as much as possible to follow the withdrawal periods. That's one of the ways you can show that you love your customers and you want to see them do well. You don't want them to die. You don't want them to fall sick. You want them to eat awesome meat. Okay, so God bless you as you do that. Um, we are going to be closing soon. I have something to do after now. Okay. How can aloe vera help my broilers? I did a video on that. Just go to the YouTube channel, DIY Agri, and search on my channel. Just search for aloe vera. You will see the video. I did it some days ago. All right. So... But it's a strong antibiotic. It's, it has antiviral properties. <clears throat> it can help them when they have, if they have a viral challenge, it can help them. And it's also good for prevention of viral diseases. It boosts the immune system. So those are the key things that it will do. All right. So we are closing soon. And if you are yet to like the video, you are not doing well all right so please like the video and share it also try as much as possible to click on the notification bell and select all 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 right so thank you very much for joining us and um we'll be ending from here okay a quick recap so that those who joined us late would not have to go and watch the whole um stream we talked about how to prevent chicks mortality. So it starts from the artery. You have to choose a good artery. The peristalk has to be good. And you can try to go with DIY agri for your chicks. We supply DO chicks to all states in Nigeria. So you can also reach us on WhatsApp on that number. All right, then transportation, try to use a driver that would um, drive safely, drive carefully, and bring the birds to your farm safely, okay? And on arrival, your brooding house should be ready. Don't start running up and down looking for lighter, looking for matches, looking for kerosene to start the fire, or that's when you now discover that your gas brooder is not working. Nah, so everything has to be tested, okay. Yeah, you get the water ready before the birds arrive so that the water is even warm. It's at the room temperature, that's brooding house temperature. Okay, so you select your eating device. I don't like charcoal, and I don't want you to like charcoal. Still. All right, nutrition is super important. Make sure that you give your birds good feed and don't starve them. Good feed in terms of quality and quantity. Let them have it as much as they can. And the first three days is very critical. Make sure that you attend to your birds, give them antibiotics for the first three to five days if you are doing it conventionally. And if you are doing organic poultry, you know what to do. Those of us who have taken the course, we know what to do. We have a chart that we just follow and everything goes well. All right, so the general well-being, you need to give your birds attention. You need to be a farmer that is available. 
a farmer that is passionate, a farmer that is just there for the birds and everything will be fine. Then I gave the organic first aid in case your birds are not fine and you just don't know what is wrong with them. You are not sure. You are not seeing any funny poop. They're just falling and dying. And you are sure, like I mentioned, they're sure it's not eat. It's not excessive eat. So you just don't know what is happening. So you can give this organic first aid. It will help your birds to recover. Or maybe your birds are sick and it's the period when, for example, Monday and Tuesday, public holiday, is a period where you can't go to the vet store to just get your drugs. So you have to give them something and this would work. So the dosage, you just give as is. You don't need to measure. There's no ratio. You just give as it is as you have prepared it. So if you need more water, you just double or you multiply the ingredients to you multiply the other ingredients. So I think that is where we'll be ending it today. That's it for chicks mortality. All right. So oh, somebody is saying she's late. Don't worry, you can you can go over it again. And I think in the past three minutes, I think I did a recap. So that should help you too. Yeah, we supplied the old port, the old bullet, anything they old. Just, just reach out to us on WhatsApp. Ooh, I won't I say who is the best, but they are, the, the two of them are good, yeah. New Open and Hendrix. I won't market for any of them. They should come and reach out to me if they want me to market for them. But New Hope is good. Hendrix is good. You won't choose any of the one, any of the two of them, and and regret. Yeah, two of them are good. They have uh, they have given us good results. And if you want to compare, maybe you want to check the videos that I did. I've done video that I used just New Hope. And I've done one that I used Hendrix. So maybe you want to go and check those videos, but then if you choose any of them, you will still smile to the bank if every other thing goes well. All right. So thank you all for watching. And it's been a wonderful session again. Next, we'll be meeting on Friday, next Friday, and it's going to be episode six. I'll be discussing something interesting again i'll try as much as possible to send the topic that i'll be discussing on friday earlier than i did this one i think this one was sent today so i try to send that of next week earlier than i did this time all right so thank you and god bless you for those of you who are interested okay let me do something now before i go if you're interested in getting the old chicks i'm just going to put the chicks booking group link i'm going to put it up here so that you can join but please don't join if you are not ready to book it's a really busy place so i don't want you to feel like you are not attended to if you are if you are not ready to book don't bother there are other places you can ask question and get response you can send messages to me privately but the group is meant for chicks booking so please if you are not ready to book don't join this group all right so that's the link and we'll be calling it a day okay so thank you and god bless you once again i'm that number one animal scientist and your poetry success partner. All right, so goodbye.